Have you ever wondered where kindergarten came from? Did people back in the 1900s do to help children of the ages three or four or in early childhood programs do to educate those children? There was a man by the name of Frederick Froebel who established the whole new early childhood system in 1837. It was a, where, it was a place where three and four year olds back in the, 18th, the 19th century could learn and begin to go to school at the ages of three and four. He was the person that redefined the whole education system by establishing kindergarten. Frederick Froebel is the man who invented kindergarten. Um, so a little bit of history. Um, he was born in 1782 and at nine months old, his mother unexpectedly passed, out, passed away. That left his dad getting remarried and that kind of left Froebel into a very hard predicament because it ended up meaning that his stepmother and his father ended up neglecting him. In 1793, Froebel was then sent to his maternal's uncle, his maternal uncle, which um, was the man who finally sent him to school. Uh, before he did go to like a girls' school, but this was more of a public school that he was actually able to like learn things and be around kids his own age. In 1805, Froebel thought he wanted to study architects, so he went to school in Frankfurt. Uh, later, he realized, you know, he was only there for like less than a year and he realized this kind of wasn't his thing, but he did use those ideas from Architect that later developed into helping with the design of his kindergarten occupation. Then later that year in 1805, um, he was hired as a teacher um, by Anton Gruner to teach at the Pezzolonian Frankfurt Model School. Um, he was requested to take a few classes, so he got to study underneath Johann Hedrick Pezzoloni to learn how to become a teacher. Um, in 1810, he studied languages and science at the University of Goington. And then he later studied me meteorology with Professor Christian Samuel Weiss at the University of Berlin. And during this time, I'm pretty sure that he was still teaching. In 1816, Froebel established the Universal German Educational Institute at Greshenham, and then he later moved that to Callingham, where it was in function until 1820. In 1819, Froebel married his wife Henrietta Hallam Hoffmeister, who helped assist all of his works until um, of her passing in 19 or 1839. Finally, in 1837, Frederick Froebel was established a new system of early childhood. Um, this was the big year that kind of changed history for kindergarten itself. Um, they called it a child's garden or kindergarten. It was made for three and four year old children where they would sit and they'd sing song. They would sing songs, they would read, they would play, and they'd do activities together. Um, it was designed as a way for children of that age to go through an educational system where they could develop their own right of direction. It later increased and soon there was kindergartens established all throughout all the German states. Froebel's pr kindergarten program um, was established on his thing called the, gi uh, the gifts on um, their sequential. So they moved from simple to complex. The first gift he gave was a set of colored felt balls then it moved up to a little more difficult. Um, a set of three hard um, little square, like dimensional shapes. Um, then gifts three to six were either a set of cubes, um, just normal blocks and wooden prisms. And these were all things that the kids could use to, um, to create like architectural designs or he also had things in there like um, sticks and rings that help with like the children's like fine motor skills and then he also used things outside the gifts um, like paper, pencils, wood, sand, clay, straw, sticks, anything like that that he would use during activities like games and songs and stories and all of this was underneath his whole idea that all of these gifts, the six gifts, would help children to develop in their play and help express their desires and that his whole idea is that children learn through playing learn through playing 
Froebel's pr kindergarten program um, was established on his thing called the, gi uh, the gifts. Um, they're sequential, so they move from simple to complex. The first gift he gave was a set of colored felt balls. Then it moved up to a little more difficult. Um, a set of three hard um, little square, like dimensional shapes. Um, then gifts three to six were either a set of cubes, um, just normal blocks, and wooden prisms. And these were all things that the kids could use to um, to create like architectural designs. Or he also had things in there like um, sticks and rings that help with like the children's like fine motor skills. And then he also used things outside the gifts, um, like paper, pencils, wood, sand, clay, straw, sticks, anything like that, that he would use during activities like games and songs and stories. And all of this was underneath his whole idea that all of these gifts, the six gifts, would help children to develop in their play and help express their desires. And that his whole idea is that children learn through playing, learn through playing. following idealist themes from the book Education of Man that was written in 1826 to base all of his philosophies of. So the first philosophy was all existence or originates in and with God. Humans possess an inherit, inherit spirit and sense that is vitalizing life source that causes development. And all beings and ideas are interconnected parts of the grand, ordered, and sentimental in the universe. He was convinced that the age group's focus should be on play. Because of that, he believed that it helped children with their thoughts, needs, and better and desires better. This contrasted a lot with the 19th century view that play was kind of a waste of time. Later in 1851, Carl um, von Rommer, um, he's the prime the Prussian, Prussian Minister of Education, he um, accused Froebel of using a kindergarten as a way to spread atheism and socialism. So then kindergarten was completely banned in Persia until 1860. Um, in 1852, during all the mess of the accusation and stuff, Froebel unfortunately passed away, but Thankfully, by the end of the 1900s, kindergarten was spread out all throughout Europe and all throughout America, and it's stuff that we see today. How do I plan to implement this into my classroom? Well, um, his biggest idea was taking the gifts and having the kids play with them, and that's kind of like the big idea around early childhood and the earlier grades is that Actually, a lot of it's just even being like taken away and not more so focused on now is the whole idea of play. The older you get, it's like the weirder it is for kids to play. But in reality, my whole goal is that I would love to just implement that more, like giving to kids more time to play. Even when they reach that second grade, they that second grade, they still need time to play. Time of like not just playing out on the playground with playground equipment and their friends. I'm talking about providing toys and providing equipment and things that they can use to build things, build things like architects or having their fine motor skills improved. Letting kids be creative because a lot of the time right now in our schools, kids are not getting that time to play. They're getting time outside in recess, but they're not getting play time like free time that you see in kinder or in preschools. Preschools, it's all about play. But so far right now, what Frobo was wanting that was that he wanted kindergarten to be all about play. And now it's almost like there's a culture shift where kindergarten today's kindergarten is becoming first grade, and today's preschool is becoming what Frobo thought was wanting as kindergarten or as um, kindergarten. So my whole idea is that I would love to bring back play and put in as much play as I can for my kindergartners or for my first or second graders.
but overall I'm just excited that I would love to give those kids those opportunities to play and be creative.